right, Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Multiple reports have surfaced that BYU guard Tanner Toulson has entered the transfer portal. We brought it up in headlines. That means BYU's roster total now has exactly 13 scholarship players, which there are 13 scholarships available. So, Jerem, what do you make of this news with Tanner Toulson moving out and BYU's current roster as... We think they're still looking in the portal. What else has to happen at this point? Yeah, always a bummer to uh, you know lose a legacy kid like Tanner. Uh, good dude, back from a mission. Kind of got hurt last year, was buried in the lineup, um, and uh, he'll seek another opportunity elsewhere um, after playing in six games. He, he was hoping to get last year back. Perhaps he still will. Best of luck to uh, Tanner Toulson. He may have a fourth year if he gets the year back. We'll see. Um, as for the roster, um, so, yeah, you, we said, hey, they're over one, they're over one. Now they're, now they're at the right number, right? Uh, 13, that doesn't mean they're not going to go get somebody either. And it'll be interesting to see um, if someone else answer, uh, goes to the portal, should they be going that direction? Because while I said it closes, it never actually closes. It's just you would have to sit out next year if you're not a grad transfer. Um, there's a certain timing associated with when you enter the portal. You can always exit the portal. Yes, just um, do so with penalties. You can always enter the portal, but you might have to sit out. So that day is tomorrow, Friday, by the way, for women's hoops. So BYU's got two point guards, eight wings, and eight three wings. bigs. So 10 of the 13 are backcourt players. I think that number's too high, Spence. I, I, I think the ideal ratio would be eight backcourt, five frontcourt. I don't think BYU's going to get get to five front court this year. I think it's going to be a um, ideally you get to a 9-4 split there. So I think BYU needs another big. Um, let's not go through what we did two years ago when Richard Harward and Gavin Baxter went down and then suddenly you're asking Fus and Atiki to be thrust into the spotlight as freshmen. True freshmen. No ideally. Less. And it, now it developed Fus, sure. Um, and Dallin Hall last year got thrown in, developed him. But you don't want that. Like that's not the if you have to get to that, sure. But I would like BYU to get one more big, but that would mean one wing is off Scali at that point. So I'm not going to project who I think that is. I think that would be unfair to that individual. But I, I think BYU's got a lot of experience, which is the good news. I think they are a little heavy in the, in the uh, backcourt department. But the experience is awesome because you've only got two dudes who are going to run out after a year uh, with Spencer Johnson and uh, Quez Glover. Uh, but everyone else returns in theory. Um, you only have a couple of freshmen and sophomores. You have four newcomers, as we mentioned, Quez Glover, Dawson Baker, uh, Ali Khalifa, and then Jake Wallin's back from a mission to Lithuania. So it, it's a group that is improved. This is a better talent roster than last year. Um, by how much, I'm not sure, but I like the experience. I like the talent. I like the diversity of skill. Yeah. I love what uh, Khalifa brings in, turn of, in terms of a big who can pass and shoot. I like Glover as kind of a pure point. Um, I like Dawson Baker's ability late in the shot clock, like we've talked about. So I love the uh, I love the group BYU's got. I still think there's probably one more piece needed, similar to these three that BYU's brought in, before we can more comfortably go into the like, okay, they, they're really going to challenge for a um, a spot in the NCAA tournament. Because listen, it's hard to make the tourney. It really is. And then of course in the Big 12, the pros and cons are the challenge. The, the schedule is so tough. It's hard to win as many games as maybe we're used to, yes. but you have a strength of schedule that the committee will respect uh, in a way where if you can be uh, perhaps the seventh or eighth best team in the Big 12, you've got a, a, a really good shot of being in the hunt at the end, which is what we're hoping for. We should probably do ourselves a favor and prepare for status quo at this point. It, I mean, I know that there's still time left for the coaches to go out and find somebody else, but options are dwindling for sure. And I, d I don't know that I'm of the opinion of, well, let's just go get whatever size is out there just so that we can have more size. And I'm not, I'm not that either. I think you need to bring in someone that makes sense. You don't just get a body to get a body. Right, and it might, be, to tough, it degree, might be tougher to find somebody that makes sense at this point. But to some degree, I think walking in with only three bigs is tough. Sure. I, BYU, don't, I don't BYU argue with that at last all. Year. You get two fouls on a guy. You only have the two guys. You get an injury. Luckily, BYU was pretty healthy last year. Listen, I, I do think BYU needs another big. BYU may have to ask Noah Waterman when bigs get in foul trouble to come in with his size and play a different role. 
and be a little bit more physical and maybe try and bulk up and do something different if they cannot find somebody. Offensively, I don't agree with that, but defensively, sure. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Defensive-minded approach here. Right. They, they may be forced into a scenario where it's like, look, you're 6'11". We need you to go in there and, and be physical, and we're in foul trouble. A.K., you need to rebound and defend. And if you stretch the floor with the three, great, awesome, because that's what you do enough. Yes, yeah. but we we should probably prepare for the worst, which I think is the status quo as far as a front court goes. If BYU doesn't find somebody else, then all right, here we are. This is what BYU the, is going. The into worst the Big would be someone jumps in the portal tonight. We didn't expect that would be the worst, <laughs> right? Like a Cody Epps, but he doesn't come back, kind of deal. Um, yeah, I feel very comfortable with this roster. I'm pleased. I'm excited. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I just think to really go into I get it. the more, Big more 12, big man depth. I would just like Foos to have a backup at the I'm four. I'm with you. I think BYU has two fives, obviously, in Khalifa and Atiki. I love Atiki as the backup, a guy who's still getting experience, kind of newer to basketball, like seventh or eighth year playing. Um, him as the backup, can defend, can rebound. There's some games where he gets uh, rebounds off the glass and he's laying it in, which is awesome. But, yeah, one more piece there just in case you have an injury. So I'm with you. Like, I feel like BYU – needs a big man but again we're getting down to the 11th hour here in terms of just available players that are good sure. and make sense rather than just going and getting some size and hoping it works out and then you're taking a scholarship away potentially from somebody else if there's a walk-on who's good enough as the backup four to have a physical presence there that would work too sure i'm, I'm yeah i'm i'm not going to be that picky but I don't want to have what we had two years ago, which was, oh, shoot. Injuries There's and now two injuries forced and now into we, a tough scenario. Yes, and then that tough scenario does not include the likes of Pacific and Pepperdine and so on. It is Kansas State, Baylor, Houston, and so on. And well, so and if, if BYU goes and gets another big, now we're talking about taking somebody else's scholarship away. And I'm hoping, and we've seen in the past some incredible athletes say, okay, I'll give up my scholarship this year and figure it out. If you can promise me that I'll get it back again, I don't know that there are any promises that can be made. And BYU is going into the Big 12, so how they offer scholarships has changed. Yeah, you now. committed the entirety of their it, eligibility. This is this is tough. You can always say, "Listen, we don't have a spot for you. You can just stay in school, but you won't be on. You'll be on Scully, but you won't be playing basketball." For There's that team. as well. You're essentially cut. There's that as well. And, Name, yeah. image, like this money. It's to an potentially... uncomfortable conversation, but as much as we want to act like um, this is, you know, it's a business. Like this is a team. They're out there to win. Of course, they want to do everybody as well as they can. But if they don't see a spot for a guy, they they're doing them a service by saying, "Listen, unfortunately, we're going to cut you. And if you want to enter the portal, that's up to you." You know, that that happened. Okay, topic two. Bracketologist Joe Lenardi has BYU on the bubble three of the last four weeks as the eighth team out. Kind of the last team mentioned. Are you buying BYU as a bubble team at this point? Yes, because BYU is playing in the Big 12. Their net ranking. The Big 12 has thrust them into that. Yes, yeah. their net ranking is going to be so significantly improved. If you couple that with just a few big-time wins, which BYU will do, that's going to happen because Big 12 teams in large part, have never played in the Marriott Center. They don't know exactly what they're walking yeah. into. They played at Kansas, like a big-time environment and a bunch, right? But BYU's Marriott Center is a different Center beast. It is fun and unique. It's a different beast. Yep. 19,000 new venue, is a little more. New eye lines. you got to get new – I mean, you got to get used deal. to some things yep. that you have not dealt with before. The Rock will bring it. And uh, while BYU will not be favored on paper, they just – they're going to win a couple of these games. I mean, heck, this year BYU sh probably should have at least won one of the games against Gonzaga and St. Mary's with a team that didn't go to the NIT. We yeah. feel like BYU's better. Those type of quality teams are going to come into the Marriott Center for the first time in large part, and BYU's going to teach some hard lessons to these teams. BYU's also going to go on the road a lot and learn some very hard lessons. Sure. But their net ranking will be so improved because of conference affiliation that if you're 17 and 14 going into the Big 12 tournament and you win a game and you're 18 and 14, then you lose, you finish 18 and 15 having played two games in Kansas City and you think, man, you're only three games over 500. Doesn't matter. You're playing in the top conference in America. Let's say you're the eighth place team. And it team. still will be with the four that come in because Houston adds a ton. You say that you're the eighth place team. Okay, remember, the Big 12 only had 10 teams last year. Now you got 14. So if you're eighth or ninth in a bigger expanded conference, greater opportunity for perhaps maybe to go and get another team into the tournament.
compared to just the seven that they had this year out of ten. I mean, seventy percent of the conference in the tournament is crazy. Yeah, that was nuts. Right. So if they get eight or nine in, BYU could be that eighth place or ninth place team. You go six and twelve in conference, and, you, and like I said, you win a game in Kansas City, and you're right there. So yes, I am buying BYU as a bubble team. I'm not buying the Cougars as an NCAA tournament team right now, but I feel like they will be in the mix, at least on the bubble. I think Lenardi is on to something just on how the, the game is set up. It's fun to see it in May. I don't care about bracketology in May. Um, I start to care once we kind of get into the season, then it's kind of in flux, and even then it's early, right? But I am excited about the prospect of what this group can become because, yes, they did not make the NIT last year, but we had a similar renaissance um, in 1819 with the team that didn't make the NIT. And the next year, they were going to be a sixth seed before COVID hit. And it was development internally of the existing players. It was the addition of some portal pieces, uh, no notably Jake Toulson. It was people who felt like they had something to prove. And I think BYU has a team that is hungry and feel, uh, feels like it has something to sure. prove. And for the first time in BYU history, is not going to fight the... We have to win this game no, on the road. We're always supposed to win it. There may not be a game that BYU is favored in on the road in league. Like, all of the wins will be beneficial every single time. There were detrimental wins in the past sometime yes. where BYU didn't win by enough maybe on the road. You know what I mean? To the committee at, against a bad team in, say, the WCC. BYU will never have that kind of loss again. They will only have beneficial wins. And it's can you win enough? That is the question for BYU in the Big 12. I'm excited to see this group together. I think BYU has increased the talent. I think they're hungry, and now they have an opportunity. That is a good recipe. Jim, the last place team in the Big 12 last year was Oklahoma. They went 15 and 17. Their net ranking was 70. Okay? They're the yeah. last place team. BYU should be a top 50 net team. Texas Tech. Walking into selection center. Was the second worst team, 16 and 16. They were 62. And then Oklahoma State was the eighth best team. And they were the first team out of the tournament, by the way. They were 42 in the net rankings at 20 and 16. Yeah. So they did not they make were, the tournament. They were on the bubble. And that's what we're talking about. It's like, it does scare me that they had 20 wins and didn't get in. But it uh, depends what those wins are, right? Absolutely, yeah. it does. All right. Our Nevada question, had a better record against like top 50 teams. Well, yeah, it was like a weird Didn't decision. work out well for Nevada once they got to the first four. <laughs> Our question well, they of got the day, it. they did get in. We'd take BYU getting into the first four right now. Absolutely, we would. Yeah. The Oklahoma State would have taken it as well. Yes. Are you buying BYU basketball as a bubble team at this point? At Y for Life on Twitter answers, hard to say. BYU finished fifth in the West Coast Conference. Fifth. What? Let's wait and see how things come together. Well, are you assuming the same team shows up next year? I am not. It's, it's a, a very it's, different team. It's a different group. You got four newcomers. Um, you got a, a, again a team that has different pieces coming in that will add to this. And it's and it's a team that suddenly got old. This team is not a young group that's saying, "Hey, return missionaries really carry us in some way." Right? That is not the case with this group.